Tonight on American Perspectives, we're looking back at the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, which happened on this day 40 years ago. The next oral history interview is from Malcolm Kilduff, the assistant White House press secretary who traveled with President Kennedy to Dallas and announced his death to the public. The Sixth Floor Museum at Dealey Plaza provided us with this interview, never before seen on television. Had you traveled with, uh, with the president, say, prior to the trip to Texas? Uh, oh, yeah. I had done most of the, uh, 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 from the time I first went to the White House. Okay. And even before I, had, before I went to the White House in 61, uh, I did yeah. some, uh, advanced him in London, and then I advanced him in, in Ireland and in Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I advanced him in, I forgot how many of the states, but in every state that he went to, after 62, in the, say, in the, like in the congressional campaign uh, of 1962, which, of course, bumped into the Cuban Missile Crisis in mm -hmm. October, uh, but I did all those states. And, uh, but when you say advance, it sounds like to me you were there before he was there. Yes, yeah, so and then you double were, back and pick him up and go out on the trip. Okay, right. yeah, that's kind of one right. get clarified. And for instance, uh, here in Dallas, uh, the White House had an advanced man by the name of Jerry Bruno. Okay. And uh, he, uh, wasn't it, uh, it was Jerry, wasn't it? Jerry Bruno uh, was the advance man here. Uh, but, you, you know, as to w what the schedule was going to be, yeah. all that has to be taken into consideration because you have your local press to consider, you have the needs of the local press, you have the needs mm -hmm. of the, uh, in other words, and, and you can't go pulling a motorcade into town, into New York City at mm -hmm. 5 o'clock in the afternoon and they'll all hate you and won't vote for you, especially if it's an election year. Yeah. <laughs> if it's an off year, you yeah. can forget it and hope they forget it. But, yeah, you know, and uh, so every place the president goes, he has to be advanced, not just by Secret Service, mm -hmm. but also by his communicators, the mm -hmm. White House Communications Agency, mm -hmm. as it was known there, WACA. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it's referred to now because it's a combined uh, command mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. of... Uh, and Navy and uh, Army. Mm -hmm. Was there anything uh, particularly different in advance of the trip to Texas, and I guess maybe specifically when the subject of Dallas being on the itinerary? No, we were, of course, very aware of the fact that in his visit uh, to Dallas in October, I believe it was, mm -hmm. or maybe September, Adlai Stevenson had been belted with rotten eggs. Oh, well, yeah, he got hit with a... Uh, uh, a poster, a picket. Yeah. Had a poster that. Right. And then there was some rotten eggs said, thrown. Because yeah. I remember a great Herb Block cartoon yeah. Yeah. showed the, the seal of Texas and uh -huh. two rotten eggs dripping from it. Yeah. Uh, that it was a, you know, that it was. And so, and, and we knew at that point, we knew that the forces of Goldwater mm -hmm. were starting to pick up in 63, preparatory to a run mm -hmm. in 64 mm -hmm. against Kennedy. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly enough, uh, we saw in, our, in the day before, on, our, on uh, November 21st, before we, got to, uh, before we got here to Dallas, mm -hmm. and in our other stops, we had seen very few Goldwater signs. Yes, we'd seen a few mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And we'd seen a, a sign, you know, shame on you for Cuba and all this business. Yeah. But not, not too many, not mm -hmm. to reflect uh, the feeling that, that sometimes today people are, are crediting with what the feeling was at that time. And I don't think that Dallas had any, uh, uh, I didn't sense any, anything in Dallas. I know there was a full page advertising. Yeah. Uh, on There's that. a copy of that in our exhibit. Is yeah. it? Yeah. I, I, rem I remember seeing that that morning because yeah. we, we saw that over in, uh, uh, I was staying at the Texas Hotel the night before in Fort Worth. We saw you, that in there. You had seen the that before you came Before we even hit the yeah. ground, yeah, the paper had yeah. been over there. Well, I think there was some discussion, uh, wasn't there, that morning about, say, whether to put the bubble on the limo or something. There was, uh, there was yeah, but uh, the president yeah. always was, and unless there was a weather reason to leave the bubble off. And the bubble wasn't really that important because yeah. that bubble was not the bubble that exists Not today. Or anything, yeah. It was a piece of plastic is all yeah. it was. Yeah. I mean, it folded up and what was it, Bill? Two parts? Mm -hmm. And uh, two parts that folded up and went into the trunk. Mm -hmm. And all it was was to protect him from the weather. From the, now, I don't say that the bullet would have gotten a good, cl as clean a shot mm -hmm. through that bubble as it would mm -hmm. without the bubble, mm -hmm. uh, but you still could have gotten at him uh, 
uh, with with the bubble on top. But the president always felt that the people, have, if the people were good enough to come out and see him, mm -hmm. he was good enough to sit there in the open car and let them see him, and mm -hmm. so he could see them because he enjoyed that. I mean, is it, I mean, you take a look at the well, pictures <laughs> when John Kennedy arrives at Love Field. Yeah, you know the smile on his face and. There was nothing very comfortable about his doing that because of his back. He had an awful lot of yeah. trouble with his back. Mm -hmm. But you go over a period of years in any of these books that you have here of pictures of Kennedy in a crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some pictures. Uh, there's one picture I've got um, in Costa Rica, for instance, mm -hmm. where there are thousands of people. I think it must be the whole country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in one little dot, you can see mm -hmm. the president. He was mobbed in because mm -hmm. they had set up line quote police lines mm -hmm. the only problem was that the police lines the costa ricans didn't quite understand it is what we meant by using barricades mm -hmm. they had school children who all carefully made little paper link chains and mm -hmm. they went out to quote hold the crowd back <laughs> and so you can imagine what yeah. happened but i mean you know we never thought of that as that but that and and you know and i think it, i look at that picture today and I think, look at this. Here he was in Costa Rica, mobbed by thousands of people, yeah. secrets are completely out of control, yeah. totally out of control. And God, he was safer there than he was on the streets of the United States. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily on the streets in Dallas, because I don't mm -hmm. buy that Dallas is a, you know, has, a, has any shame to live down. I don't think it does. Because mm -hmm. after all, there have been, um, after all, McKinley was killed in Buffalo, and I've mm -hmm. never heard that Buffalo goes around with it wearing a mourning band. Mm -hmm. I don't see any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of, kind of recall for us if you can say, uh, arriving in Dallas, what your impression. Well, of course, there was no the arrival that? ceremony scheduled for yeah. Love Field as such. Uh, it was announced what time he would arrive, approximately, mm -hmm. and where he would arrive. And as the films will show, we had a pretty good crowd out there. Yeah, there were Love a lot Field. of people out there. There were yeah. a lot, but there was no speaker stand set up. No. Uh, there was no microphone set up, mm -hmm. so that we had no. Arrival. Typically, you would have arrival remarks, but he didn't have any arrival remarks, and indeed didn't make any. He and Jackie, as we, as we would call it, worked the crowd, worked the fans, mm -hmm. and um, and and that was totally by design. I mean, he did not want to do anything at the at the airport. I mean, the big event, I guess, was, that's right. Was the luncheon at the, at the uh, trademark, trademark. Yeah. right? And, and the that was to, and that was to be the, the big uh -huh. event. And of course, he was very very mindful that he was walking into a political yeah. bed of uh, the forces uh, loyal to um, Ralph Yarborough and those mm -hmm. uh, forces, those Democratic forces, loyal to John Connolly, because he, yeah. he was very fond of, of Governor Connolly, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you, you suddenly find, and Yarborough was riding in the car with Johnson, and he didn't really know why, and I don't think Johnson knew why either. Well, they were and, uh, well known political enemies. Yeah, but yeah. but I mean, you know, here they were <laughs> in various uh, places, sitting next to each other and riding in cars yeah. together, and and I never saw two unhappy fellows oh, in my life. No. That <laughs> <laughs> they weren't very happy I, I, about that whole thing. But it, it was important, and Kennedy was thinking of the 1964 elections, yeah. and, and he did consider this area particularly as being key to his own re-election bid in 1964 and to uh -huh. to try to meld the forces yeah. uh, loyal to Connolly and those loyal to Yarborough and, and to come up with a unified Democratic Party. He considered this trip was yeah. necessary to the extent that since 1960, when he was elected, Mrs. Kennedy had not gone on any political trip. I know trips. that. I, was I mean, she I went to, to uh, get you to comment on yeah, that. Yeah, she went to uh, uh, Canada with him, mm -hmm. and she accompanied him to Paris. Yeah, uh, which he mentioned in his speech at Fort Worth yeah, that morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but aside from that, she did, and, and she really didn't like political trips. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I hate to say that, but it's the truth, mm -hmm. and everybody knows it. In no sense in you know, edging on the hit issue, but that's how important this trip this was. Yeah. This was to him. And, uh, and I think she was rather enjoying it, if you want to know the truth. You think so? Yeah, I, I was wondering yeah. about what impressions you were gained, as not necessarily in Dallas, but say, you know, at, along the way. Yeah, no, she seemed to be she enjoying was doing it. it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think. Well, that, being the subject of a great deal of adulation and so forth. Yeah, and, and well, really, and I, I think, and he also knew something, and being mm -hmm. as shrewd a politician he, as he mm -hmm. was, that is, and he said, said this, mm -hmm. that as many people would come out to see her as it would come out to see him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, 
that point, you take any vote. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you talked about a uh, sort of sparsity, perhaps, of, say, Goldwater. Was, did that hold true along the Dallas route? He came in uh -huh, from the airport? Yeah. Yeah, you airport. can see it in the films. You'll see well, a that's few. What, yeah, that's the impression I had, too. Yeah. People had said there really was very few. There were some anti-Cuba signs, yeah. Uh, yeah. but that was understandable, and we knew that because of your free Cuba movement that was active. Well, we must inevitably get to <laughs> yeah, right. the point of, of, of getting down to uh, uh, the street in front that runs in front of right. the well, we, we, you know, right we took this, uh, and so if you uh, can kind of walk us through that. Well, I was riding in the in the press car, which, which was in relationship to the, the th three memorable. afterwards. Three after, okay, and. Um, that was the, in any presidential motorcade in those days, you had a pool car, which was made up of four reporters, yes. and the, usually in the press secretary. Mm -hmm. And then behind that, you'd have a pool of cameramen in one car, still cameramen in another car, motion mm -hmm. picture cameramen for mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. television cameras. Because mm -hmm. in those days, they were shooting 16 millimeter film. Yeah. So you had the three pool cars, and in the pool car I was riding in, press secretary's car, and, and the reason I was on that trip as acting press secretary for the trip is that Pierre Salinger, President Kennedy's press secretary, was on his way to Japan yeah, that's uh, right. with, uh, with, the, yeah, with Doug Dillon and uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Dean Rusk mm -hmm. for an economic conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had decided he'd go along on that mm -hmm. as a White House representative. Mm -hmm. uh, that's enough said about that. Yeah. But anyway. Um, so that's, that, w that was the reason I was on the trip rather than yeah. Salinger. I would have been on the trip and been, been in the motorcade somewhere, but certainly yeah. not, not up there had this, yes, had this not. And spot. the four pool reporters were Bob Clark of ABC, Bob mm -hmm. Baskin of the Dallas Morning News, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, Jack, um, Jack Bell of Associated Press, yeah. and of course Merriman Smith of yeah. United yeah. Press. And, of course, the driver was an employee of south uh, mm -hmm. of the Bell system. Mm -hmm. who was, and, and we had the one phone in the car. Mm -hmm. So as we came right, we turned right here, mm -hmm. right, right at that window. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is off of Houston onto Elm Street and, and going down towards what's called the Triple Underpass. Triple here. Underpass. Mm -hmm. Right as we passed there, I heard this first noise. And, and, Mer and Smith said, what the hell was that? And I said, well sounded to me like a firecracker. And mm -hmm. I remember having the thought process, well, you know, it's a week before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, uh, they sell fireworks here. I mean, that much I can remember. Mm -hmm. And then the second shot, by that time I noticed when the, that Clint Hill, who was a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, had jumped off the Secret Service follow-up car mm -hmm. and was running towards the President's car. But then I looked up to, from where the, the second shot came from, and I was looking, of course, at the six, looking up at this building. Yeah, yes. Now, I cannot say that I was looking at the exact location the, it was coming from, yeah, but it, I knew it was coming from direction. above and uh, over my right shoulder. It was not yeah. coming from the grassy knoll over there yeah. at all. It was coming uh -huh. from above me and... Uh, uh, and from my rear, and I, I yeah. looked back there, and I could not, very honestly, I could not see anything. And yeah. of course, now that I've, I've seen it, I and can understand after why. Two shots. That's been right. Fired. That's okay. right. And uh, then I, uh, there was a longer space between the first and second than there was between the second and the third shots. Uh -huh. And uh, then I noticed that the Secret Service car, and the President's car, had s started to speed up. Yes. So we sped up in the uh -huh. pool car. Uh -huh. But that still didn't surprise me. Yeah. Because after all, it was obvious that something untoward had happened. Yeah. And that this would be a normal operating procedure to get the hell out of there yeah. in a big hurry. Yeah. And uh, it never, and of course Merriman Smith grabbed the phone in the pool car Mm -hmm. to say that shots had been fired at the presidential motorcade mm -hmm. at that time and not until we got to Parkland Hospital mm -hmm. did any of us know to what extent. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that, gee, I wonder if they shot Connolly. Did, 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 mm -hmm. Mrs. did Mrs. Kennedy get... You know, it never what? even occurred to me that the president had been shot. 
I mean, I've heard people say. Why do you think you thought? (laughs) Because I think that it is, you know, this is America. It's inconceivable. Uh, Okay. The inconceivable nature of it all. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just block that thought from, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's the last thing you, you know, this is America. We don't Mm -hmm. do, we're not like a banana republic where we're going, shooting uh, shooting off our leaders right and left. Of course, the fact remains is we've we've killed six, mm. mm-hmm. or shot at six. I mean, and if you take, um, uh, you know, Roosevelt with uh, with Mayor Cermak of Chicago yes. was killed. You take Harry Truman, mm-hmm. and you take um, uh, McKinley, mm-hmm. Lincoln, Garfield. I forgot who else it was. Who else Reagan. Was? Reg- well, that was before Reagan. Oh, yeah. before Reagan. Before I Reagan. Mean, yeah, you're yeah. talking before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's right. Excuse me. But I mean, you know. We're, we're not the freest nation in the world of, of having taken our leaders out the mm-hmm. hard way. Mm-hmm. But no, nevertheless, I guess because when you're that close, the last thing you think of, mm-hmm. of course, and I was, I didn't have the view of the president that some of the people on the grassy knoll did that, uh, who responded to newsmen saying he held his, I saw him clutch his throat. Yeah. Which, of course, we saw that in the Zabruta film. In the film player. Yeah. yeah. And even as we pulled, and, and of course, as we drove out, I didn't know the, the area that well, yeah. so therefore I didn't know where the trademark was, where we were headed yeah. for lunch or anything mm-hmm. else, and then we pulled into Parkland Hospital, mm-hmm. and I ran around, as some of those film clips will, mm-hmm. yours will show, mm-hmm. I ran out of the car and went over, and there was the president, you know, slumped over in Mrs. Kennedy's lap, mm-hmm. and um, of course they couldn't remove him from the back of the car mm-hmm. until they removed Conley and Nellie. Mm-hmm. Because they were sitting on the jump seats in front of the president, and Mrs. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they got Conley out of there, mm-hmm. and Mrs. Conley, and then they removed the president. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when we went into the um, uh, uh, emergency but entrance there at the back of who Parkland. Was, who was the security that was kind of managing this? Was this the Secret Service or the yes. Dallas Police? Both? S- no, I mean, Secret Service, it was Roy Kellerman stayed with the president they the whole time. You, you went in with them. That's right. And, and I also had police identification. Had we, we always wore uh, buttons of different okay. shades and colors. Bill here can tell you, uh, he, uh, same thing. Mm-hmm. We'd go on different trips and we'd have a trip button in my pitch. It'd be a uh, blue porcelain mm-hmm. button with a white dot in it and other yeah. times it'd be green with a uh, orange dot in it. and. Uh, and all the police of, yeah. uh, would have a card that would show what the authorized buttons were. Yeah. Some of them were circles, they were staff, some of them I would see. be triangles, uh-huh. they were security, some of them would be uh, squares, they'd be a signal core, something like that. Yeah. And well, they, I know that, that they shut it down, or I understand they shut it down right away as, as in letting anybody get into the hospital back there say, a guy in a business suit if you didn't have any yeah, other Yeah, they did, and, but, yeah. but the Secret Service even got to the point where they didn't even allow the Dallas police in. Yeah, well, I heard It's got a little testy there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Kellerman shut it down mm-hmm. just completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, after we got there, and I was, and when we got to the hospital, it still didn't occur to me that the president was dead. You did not say, visually, say, looking at him in the car. He was a mess. But, but it, it, you didn't, you didn't, I guess I had a mental say at block. At that point, he's dead. No, you know? I yeah. did not. And I went in, and I remember my thinking and re- recalling back when Eisenhower had a heart attack back in, in Denver one time. Uh huh. That Jim Haggerty had set up a press room, and they had a press thing. I don't know why I thought of those things. Mm-hmm. I just did. Mm-hmm. So I told a fellow who was traveling with us by the name of Wayne Hawks, who was. Uh, on the staff to go find something we could use as a press room. He came up with a nurse's instruction room out there apartment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to get, in hold, get a hold of the telephone company to start getting some press phones in because, mm-hmm. you know, you couldn't get it. Uh, apparently, from what I've heard, you couldn't even get a, the phone's lines were just jammed here in Dallas. No. Well, yeah, they were. I know some of the reports. But I do know some of the out. people. I know Merriman Smith got a hold of a, tel- uh, a, mm-hmm. a coin telephone mm-hmm. and right there outside the emergency entrance. And uh, he got an open line right away and opened mm-hmm. to Washington, and it stayed open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there was no problem there. Jack Bell, again, was not very... Mm-hmm. He, he never... He just lucked out all the way. Uh, lucked mm-hmm. all, I mean, had no luck at all. Mm-hmm. Smith had all the luck in finding the phones and everything else. By the way, he got... Uh, Smith ev- eventually got the Pulitzer Prize for his coverage of that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, ended up blowing his head off, but... Well, 
uh, luck, committing suicide. <laughs> luck sometimes uh, does play a role in these things. But yeah, yeah. Who are you working with, say, at the hospital in terms of getting information about Dr. The Perry? Dr. Perry. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. No, it was Malcolm, Malcolm Perry. Perry yes. Yeah. Same as name as mine. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one who told me. Okay. So. And I don't know who Bill uh, Stinson was working with. Yeah. Who was, of course, he was working for on the. Conley side of it too, and we were equally concerned yeah. about getting information out on who, both of them. Who, beside yourself, would say involved in the process of deciding uh, when we're going to announce, what we're going to announce? What okay, we're I, when it became apparent to me that the president was dead, mm -hmm. and that was within a very few minutes after we got there, mm -hmm. um, before one o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, I went to Kenneth O'Donnell and I said, uh, Kenny, I said, uh, we're going to have to announce the president's death. Mm -hmm. Kenny was chief of staff to Kenneth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kenny said to me, and Kenny, of course, had been... Um, He'd been close with... Been close, close with Kennedy's and, and yeah. a roommate of Bobby's at school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this was his life. Mm -hmm. His life had just been shot away. Mm -hmm. Kenny's now dead. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he said, Hal, he said, don't ask me. Go ask Johnson. Mm. So I went across the hall into a trauma room where Rufus Youngblood, mm -hmm. his Johnson's uh, Secret Service agent, was. And uh, I walked in, and I didn't know what to call him. And I didn't know Lyndon Johnson that well. Yeah. Yes, I'd seen him around the White House. He knew me by name, and I, mm -hmm. <laughs> naturally, I yeah. you know. But... Uh, I walked up to him, and uh, I suddenly realized I didn't know what to call him. Mm -hmm. The situation, de mm -hmm. facto, he was the president. Mm -hmm. I said, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. And Lady Bird just kind of screamed. Uh, and mm -hmm. let out an mm -hmm. audible. Mm -hmm. And apparently, and according to him, and according to some writings of his, mm -hmm. when I said that to him was the first, first. solid information that he had that he was the de facto mm -hmm. president. I said, I'm going to have to announce President Kennedy's death. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, and uh, we, and it's very interesting. And you know, the man was a great historian. Mm -hmm. He had a great mind for history, Lyndon mm -hmm. Johnson did. Mm -hmm. We don't know what kind of a conspiracy this might be. Mm -hmm. And later he, and you could see it going through his mind of um, Booth, mm -hmm. You know, with Lincoln and yeah. all the Mary Surratt conspiracy and all mm -hmm. this, this business going through his, his head. He said, but I think Bird and I ought to get out of here and back to Air Force One before you make the announcement. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right. So he said, come on. He said to Rufus, he said, let's go on back to the plane. Mm -hmm. And by that time, we knew that the president would be transported. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the body would go yeah. back on Air Force One. Yeah. Now, the Secret Service made the determination that Lyndon Johnson would go back on Air Force One. A lot of people have been critical of Johnson, saying that he seized power mm -hmm. uh, at, at an opportune moment. It was not. It was on uh, the advice of the Secret Service on uh, going back to Air Force One. Mm -hmm. And number two, it was on the advice of the Secret Service to use Air Force One rather than the backup plane, yeah. which was uh, the second plane. Air Force Two, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, when we got him out of the emergency entrance, I walked out with him. Bob, Bob Pierpoint, I remember of CBS, said he remembers seeing me come out, but doesn't remember seeing Johnson. Well, I don't know I, how he could ever <laughs> miss Lyndon Johnson. Well, he, 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 I mean, we put ass, him in the yeah. car, and we got back. And as soon as we got the word, and in those days, the code was uh, his. his uh, I always tickled me. His his code name yeah. was Volunteer, mm -hmm. and it always tickled me because uh, Lyndon Johnson was about as much of a volunteer to being <laughs> being in the White House as uh, nothing. But I mean, it was kind of amusing, and it said that Volunteer had returned to Angel. And as soon as I got that, Angel was the uh, code name for Air Force One. Were there were there other reactions? I mean, do you think Johnson's reaction to uh, fearing that there was a conspiracy, was was that sort of the common reaction among the people within I, that? It group wasn't in or? mine, and it wasn't in Kenny O'Donnell's. A lot of people have had second thoughts about it, 
and have said to, will say today, oh, I thought right away it was a conspiracy. Well, if they did, they sure as hell kept their mouth shut about it at the time. At the time yeah. I think that, it, you know, uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Yeah. But I sure didn't hear about it, no. And yeah. they did not talk about it even there at the hospital or even coming back on Air Force One. Yeah. But Johnson, you could see it. He was, he was forever the historian. Yeah. yeah. And by that time, of course, and then after he cleared and after I'd re received word that he was back in it, Approximately 1.31, I went ahead and made the announcement that you have here. Uh -huh. At least I think you have it. Yes, we do have and, it. Yeah. Uh, 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 and made the announcement. And then when the body was returned to, uh, they wanted to keep the body here for uh, an autopsy. Yes. And that's when Roy Kellerman and some other agents and myself formed sort of a flying wedge. Uh -huh. And the Dallas police were told to keep the body here. Uh -huh. Roy Kellerman had received word from headquarters to bring it back to Washington for an autopsy at Walter Reed, yeah. or at Bethesda Naval, whichever yeah. was to be used. And we flew out that door and put the casket mm -hmm. in the uh, ambulance, and we took off and how, I went to Love Field. How spurred did what was the uh, uh, effort to to keep you from doing that? Was there that were a couple of detectives who were quite spirited upon them. <laughs> I, I, I remember looking down on them on the floor as I passed them. Uh, they, one of them yeah. took a rather nasty hit, I don't know by whom, but one of them went down. Well, there was a, a, a law or an ordinance or whatever that uh, the body couldn't be removed, but we did an oral history with Henry Wade, who was the district attorney yeah. at the time, and he, he rather wryly observed that, well, it was breaking a law, but the only penalty for that law was a hundred dollar fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Were you aware? Were you, was no, anybody aware of that? So, no, no, so, you know, no. Wasn't that big a deal? No. So, and then we went back to Air Force One, and by that mm -hmm. time, Lyndon Johnson had contacted the Attorney mm -hmm. General, mm -hmm. of course, President's mm -hmm. brother. Brother, yes. You know, in calling a spade a spade, and you got to do it. There was no love lost between Lyndon Johnson and Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm even mm -hmm. though he stayed on as Attorney General, mm -hmm. they were not exactly enamored of each other. Mm -hmm. But Bobby advised him that uh, in case any presidential decisions, uh, not knowing what was, what was going on, mm -hmm. that it would be best if he um, was sworn in here. Okay, so that came from Bobby Kennedy. That came okay. from Bobby Kennedy. Now here again, uh, history There's loves to rewrite itself that, yeah. because uh, you'll find among some of the Kennedy people uh, here again that, that Johnson had seized the power as quickly yeah. as he could. He did not mm -hmm. uh, do that at all. He, uh, uh, he did this on the advice of the Kennedys, mm -hmm. if you accept mm -hmm. Bobby as, a, mm -hmm. as the Kennedys, yeah. which I, yeah. I think you have to. Yeah. So that was the that was a decision made by the attorney general that he should mm -hmm. be sworn in, and of course he was sworn in as, the, as we have photographic knowledge of on, on Air Force One, and sworn uh, in by Judge Sarah Hughes, which of mm -hmm. course was another slight irony, mm -hmm. as you probably know. Since well, uh, and you want to explain that for us? Or? Well, he, uh, uh, as you know, Lyndon Johnson had opposed her. Mm -hmm. uh, appointment to the federal bench, mm -hmm. the federal district court judge, and it's, it's all, it's every time I see that picture, the swearing in <laughs> with uh, <laughs> President uh -huh. Lyndon Johnson looking down at Judge Sarah Hughes, wondering to myself, now what in the world was he really thinking of, of all the judges they know it's world, they had to find this her. one. <laughs> well, she was sort of a leading jurist in, in the city, and, and, and at least in terms of a public profile, I don't know yeah, if that anything to do right, with it or not. Yeah. No, it's just I think they it got was, a hold of the yeah, first federal yeah. court judge that they could. And it was her. It just yeah. happened to be her, and I know yeah. that it was reported back to me yeah. that he had opposed her appointment to the federal bench. Now, the did you go from the hospital with the casket, or mean, you mean uh, back to the uh, Air Force One at Love Field? I mean, yes, in Dallas. Getting yes. back. Okay. Now, as you pointed out, we looked at the photograph. You were recording the swearing in. That's the only. That's correct. Uh, on Air Force Audio One in the in the record of that. Cabin. You That's had right. the foresight to do that. And yeah. You want to tell us about that? No, well, as we got on uh, Air Force One, and uh, all the Kennedy people were in the far aft mm -hmm. section of the plane around the casket. Mm -hmm. They had removed four seats from the back section. That back section of Air Force One at that time contained a conference room, mm 
mm-hmm. and a bedroom, and then behind that four more seats mm-hmm. and an aft galley. Mm-hmm. They had removed the seats from the uh, the four seats mm-hmm. to make room for the casket. Mm-hmm. The Kennedy, some of the Kennedy people, Pamela Turnour, Mrs. Mm-hmm. Kennedy's press secretary, uh, Mrs. Gallagher, mm-hmm. Mrs. Gallagher, uh, uh, Mrs. Kennedy's secretary, mm-hmm. was back there with her. Ken O'Donnell and Dave Powers mm-hmm. stayed in the aft section of that plane. Then when, it, when Judge Hughes came aboard, the president asked that Mrs. Kennedy be invited to come up during his swearing mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. I suppose that was a no-win situation. Yeah. That uh, some of the people would be critical that uh, he wanted her by his side, whether mm. uh, despite any ill feelings that there mm. might have been. But she did come forward. She was only too gracious about coming forward. She never, mm-hmm. never blinked a, an eye, a mm-hmm. twitched a muscle. And on that, some of those pictures again, you can see the blood on that red mm-hmm. suit of hers. Mm-hmm. And uh, she stood right next to him as he, as he was sworn in mm-hmm. uh, as, uh, as our president. And uh, then within a few, a very few moments, of course, uh, we, uh, after Judge Hughes left the aircraft, uh, we were airborne and back to Washington. Mm-hmm. Nothing on that flight, I, uh, you, whether you want to... Yeah, everybody, we that. all drank about as much as, a, as human beings could yeah. possibly consume, mm-hmm. but nobody got drunk. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. I, mm-hmm. I don't know how much we had to drink and, or how many mm-hmm. of us did drink, but I know I had plenty. Mm-hmm. And yet that was on a Friday and I did not end up going to bed for a full night's sleep until the mm-hmm. following Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Well, you sure had a, <laughs> a kind of awesome responsibility on your shoulders at that time. Was it, were you thinking about that when all no, this was No, you, you, no. I, I think it's one of those things that happens to you and you, when it's all over, you ever been in a close call in an mm-hmm. automobile accident and you, you, you think everything's fine and then uh, an hour later you suddenly look at your hands and they're all filled with sweat? And yeah. It's, uh, no, you, uh, but, but you're, you're aware of the fact that, that here is history being made. You don't think of yourself in mm-hmm. relationship to that history. In other words, you don't think of yourself, well, what part am I playing in the history? That yeah. didn't, certainly I never didn't even think about it. But... Uh, and, but suddenly, and you you stop and you think, well, my God, you know what what, what look what's happened, uh-huh. and uh, it, you know, and it's uh, it was certainly far more, uh, you know, uh, traumatic than other things that I had witnessed, I, yeah. uh, such as the attempted assassination of Mary Truman, and and of course the Sunday that my mother and father and I went to Lakehurst, New Jersey, to watch the Hindenburg come in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like that joke. A fellow that uh, Al Cap used to draw, uh, uh-huh. Joe Blitzfitz with a, a, a little black cloud uh-huh. over him. Uh-huh. But uh, no, you don't think about that at the time. You don't think well, about what, what was maybe kind of the the most difficult thing in that time period was just trying to. The most difficult thing was to say that John Kennedy was dead. Mm-hmm. I, the film will show that I yeah. stutter on that. Yeah. And I didn't get into it clean. Mm-hmm. Because I, I guess it's sort of like telling somebody that uh, a close friend has died. Mm-hmm. You, it's hard to come out. It's mm-hmm. hard. You, it doesn't. You don't want to say it because once you've said it, it makes it so. Mm-hmm. And, and and I, and in reflection, I think that's how I felt. I know that's how I felt. That by saying it, it's it, it's so. And if I don't say it, it won't be so. What do, What do you remember about say the press that you were? making this announcement to what? I have no recollection of, yeah. of the press in front of me. Yeah. None. Yeah. None. I, I just, to me it was a sea of faces. I remember off to one side, mm-hmm. oh, there's a great fellow from the Washington Post, old fellow, he's dead now. I can't remember, but I remember him. He was mm-hmm. a, a marvelous, <laughs> good old what's his name, but I mean it was, a, um, uh, he was just, uh, Eddie Folliard. Mm-hmm. had been with the Washington Post mm-hmm. a year. I remember seeing him over there. Mm-hmm. And I remember Merriman Smith right in front of me, of course. And I remember a fellow by the name of Chuck Reynolds, who was mm-hmm. a guy with the Alderson Reporting Company. He did the, the stenotyping. He was sitting right in front of me. One of your photos, I think, around mm-hmm. here shows that. Or maybe it's just in my book. What about when you got back to Washington was, of course, this was a different 
group press? Well, a, some, a whole lot of people had been brought in, I don't know by whom or for what purpose, into the White mm -hmm. House. By the time we got back, somebody was working at my desk and somebody was working at Salinger's desk, and I had to, there was a fellow by the name of Paul Southwick, who was a very good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and he kind of taken over my desk, and I had to kind of reclaim it, and tell, mm -hmm. uh, tell him to get out, and he said, well, uh, you know, I've been asked to come in to help out. I said, help out what? Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I don't have anything to help out. Mm -hmm. Well, they're making the funeral arrangements. I said, well, I'm not going to make the funeral arrangements. I said, neither are you. I said, the Kennedy family is going to be making the funeral arrangements mm -hmm. with the assistance of the military district of Washington. Now get out of my desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there was a little bit, I, I guess really what it was is nobody knew what to do. Yeah. So therefore, everybody was doing what they thought to. somebody would want. And it just, it, 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 was, it was confusion, you know, yeah. let's face it. It had to be confusion. Uh, did procedures or anything much change, say, within your office, uh, say, after the assassination took place? No, not in, the, not in the not in the press office. office. Uh, yeah. If uh, local organizations uh, wanted to cover the arrival of the president, mm -hmm. they would. They'd have to let let the local uh, politicians or who was ever running the show mm -hmm. know in advance enough uh, enough in advance. Uh, who they were going to assign, what their social security number was, so they could throw it through a computer. But uh, you know, if, yeah, if, if a president is going to to Keokuk and he's going to uh, address mm -hmm. ten thousand people, uh, why worry about three reporters from the Keokuk Times mm -hmm. and, and do a whole check on them? Because you're not going to be able to do a check on the ten thousand that are going to get probably tickets from every ward healer and uh, either that or grocery store clerk in, in Keokuk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Was well, kind of the the inner circle at the White House, uh, kind of quickly make a transition over to we have to continue business as usual. Uh, I think most of us did. There were some of them who spent an awful lot of time kind of mourning the president's passing, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, uh, and it's uh, it's too bad because some of them were very talented people who just uh -huh. more or less kind of made a career out of being uh, Kennedy mourners. Uh, mm -hmm. but to me, it was kind of, you know, the, the torch has passed, as they'd mm -hmm. said, and they, you know, the king is dead, long live the king. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're a, uh, a country whose laws provide for such things. Mm -hmm. You have to go on. The, the government goes on. The government doesn't stop. Were you, say, in your office Saturday as opposed to, and then Sunday when the, uh, you know, during the funeral proceedings, and then what I was on you? my way up to the, the there were services up at the rotunda of the Capitol that day, uh -huh. and I was going up uh, my way up to, uh, and we had to share our car, yeah. our cars. Uh, uh, we had a we had a garage then that had a few more cars than Mr. Clinton is allowing. Uh -huh. He apparently has cut down on the number of cars. Uh, yeah which won't last, but uh, he wants to think it does. <laughs> make the gesture. Uh, yeah, make the big gesture. And I know I shared my car with Billy Graham. As a matter of fact, we were in the oh, car. Uh, I was in the car when a message came over that uh, was that uh, Oswald had been shot by Ruby. That's where and The you only were. problem was, you know, they got the message garbled. They immediately knew who had shot Oswald. They got the name slightly wrong. They said it had been shot by Jack Rubley. Rubley? You remember the L in there? Mm-hmm. Well, the Signal Corps officer who we left here to cover mm -hmm. was a Major Jack Rubley. Oh, my <laughs> Which was funny. Do you oh, remember him? I Bill? guess so. <laughs> and you were with Billy Graham at the time? I was with Billy Graham was in my car. Your call. His reaction? Or you oh, he, he said, well, just how, yeah, he said, isn't that terrible? When will this all end? So sort yeah. of attitude. Yeah. But I mean, you, know, you, Go ahead. you can't do that chest thumping too much because, you know, things mm -hmm. are going to happen. It's just... Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, you know, the Ruby thing was one of the major contributions to all the conspiracy. conspiracy. Oh, sure. It's set off later. Right, and, exactly. Uh, but I just, uh, I've never seen of all these books that you have here, of all these uh, great, you know, post-mortems and the Oswald affair and all this, uh, they, you mean to tell me they couldn't pin it down if it was actually a conspiracy? Yeah, I, I yeah. can't buy that. Who had to deal with all the talk, speaking of uh, uh, sort of the problems of dealing uh, with, with the press 
office dealing with all the dignitaries that came in for the funeral? No, the, the kind of State stuff? Department. Yeah, no, State most Department of the did that. State Department Office of Protocol. Yeah. Did that. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, many people coming in from overseas. Of course, it's, uh, in uh, June of '63, yeah. uh, President Kennedy had been to Ireland, and a big mm -hmm. group had come over from Ireland including one of the fellows who I, he was the chairman of the New Ross County Council. Mm -hmm. And I, I had done, uh, he was one of the favorites of Kennedy's that Kennedy mm -hmm. met on the trip mm -hmm. over there. I did the advance work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and his name was Andrew Minahan. Mm -hmm. And he had a big red beard and he was a great looking man. And a map of Ireland, he made Barry Fitzgerald look like an Arab. <laughs> I mean, it was just marvelous. Uh -huh. And he came over and he was, just, they, they just loved them in Ireland. Yeah. Just, I mean, the, you know, I never saw a crowd. I think the whole nation was at every one of our stops in Ireland. I never saw such crowds in my life. Well, uh, one of the people from Dallas, one of the community leaders uh, who later became Mayor Eric Johnson, was one of the representatives from Dallas who went to Washington and felt they should have some presence sure. there and said that they were standing on a uh, hotel room balcony looking out and with the gall and said, you know, the thought occurred to them, if we had a raffle here, we could have taken out. Oh, you mean on the parade up yeah, to the, parade well, he up. must have been staying at the Mayflower Hotel. Yeah, I think that's where he was. Yeah, because th that's where we went, that's where that parade, I've, I've seen, every time I see that, the gall marched right at the head of that yeah. foreign, and he was a pot shot for anybody, and he, remember yeah, he was having right. trouble in Algeria at the yeah. time, and if you go to Paris, Three or four times a night, you'd hear that e on e on yeah. somebody racing because it set another bomb off, yeah. and he refused Secret Service protection. He absolutely yeah. would have no bodyguards around him for that walk from the White House. Yeah. All the way, and he, he's almost blind as a bat. Well, yeah. he's uh, yeah. In one of the films in the exhibit, you, it, it, there's a clip of that. Yeah, yeah he's he just he really blind as a bat, and here he walked just as stiff as he could right up kind of mm -hmm. Connecticut Avenue to St. Matthews. And I'll tell you, that was one impressive sight. Uh, the only other impressive yeah. sight that impressed me more mm -hmm. was at the graveside. Mm -hmm. uh, describe that for us. Well, after the, uh, after the services of St. Matthews, the motorcade went, on, mm -hmm. went its way out to uh, Constitution Avenue across Memorial Bridge mm -hmm. up to uh, Arlington Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Going to Arlington Cemetery for me is kind of like old home weekend. But I, most of my family members are buried there. Mm -hmm. And as the services were going off on that knoll just beneath the mm -hmm. uh, Lee House, the mm -hmm. Robert E. Lee Mansion, mm -hmm. Air Force One, and it's on a hill and we're looking up at the mansion and the mm -hmm. grave is down here. Suddenly Air Force One comes across. They'd had the the, the, the fighter planes coming yeah. with the missing man yeah. formation. Uh -huh. Then Air Force One came in at about 500 feet mm. and two six thousand and right. dipped its wings. And I tell oh. you, that sent a chill right up my spine. And I yeah, was yeah. I was doing great until that, and I kind of broke down a little bit on that. Well, that was Jim Swindell. Did a real dip. I mean, he dipped that baby. <laughs> Why you start dipping a 707? You're dipping a hunk of machinery. I'll tell you, that was a very, yeah. very uh, well. It's a very poignant very moment. Poignant, also moment with uh, uh, Walter Cronkite in the, the videos we have, where he passed along. I think you saw that little part of that where he right. had to pass along the announcement, where he obviously was choking and 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 holding back. Right. That maybe that's when that kind of hit him too, I think. Yeah, he went through the same thing when Bobby was killed. Mm -hmm. I spotted for Cronkite. Uh, Don mm -hmm. Hewitt, who's an executive producer mm -hmm. for 60 Minutes, mm -hmm. called me the night Bobby was killed and asked me to get to New York right away. And could I do it? And I said yes. In 68. And I went up there and I did what someone was spotting and I stayed in the control room mm -hmm. and spotted and I could, I was feeding Cronkite all who these various people were, who were on the mm -hmm. on the train, and as the train came to Washington and all that. But well, he he's a very emotional guy. Mm -hmm. kind of well, I guess all of us who are old enough to recall it, at some yeah. point there, it, it really hit us too. Right. It really hit you that way. Well, just to kind of clarify one little other thing about uh, uh, 
talking about the three shots, uh, you were satisfied they all came from the same direction. There's never been any same sound, same. Never any question in my mind from that day to this mm -hmm. as to as from where the shots originated, mm -hmm. the sound of them, and where they. No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I was never. Did you never. compare notes with any of the other people, say, in the motorcade about that or anything like that? No, because that? the others in the motorcade, uh, the others in the newsmen, uh, were in my car. They were not even in as good a position as I was to hear it because I had the open window. I had my, mm -hmm. uh, Merriman Smith was sitting in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to Secret Service men like mm -hmm. uh, Roy mm -hmm. Kellerman, mm -hmm. who was riding a shotgun mm -hmm. in the front seat. Mm -hmm. Talked to Clint Hill, mm -hmm. and Clint and uh, Roy, uh, uh, Roy's dead now, which I mm -hmm. didn't even know until a couple months ago. But there was never any question, question in their mind. Yeah. Uh, Seems to be the general. Yeah. Like no, but I mean, for somebody like uh, in, in uh, Mark Lane, it, it you know makes for great copy when you want to write another book and make another couple of thousand dollars on a lecture tour around the country mm -hmm. when you weren't even there. Yeah. Before we end these uh, interviews, we always ask the subject if there's anything that we have not discussed. No, not really. I just uh, the only thing that I would say, and the one thing that I think most Americans are not appreciative of. And I'm not saying that just because I'm taping in Texas. I've said it for 30 years that I don't think I could, I don't think that we were in, could have been in better shape than uh, having the government turned over to Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. That he was the master of it from the first moment. That he had a calm, he was the calmest and coolest of us all. Mm -hmm seem to know exactly what we, you know, what should be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, uh, that he proved that it was a, 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 he was a credit to the American political system as to how the, as they would say, how the mm -hmm. torch was passed. Mm -hmm.